how we worship God through entering the story. That was true in Passover, and that's true with Palm Sunday. We're entering the story of welcoming God as king. So um, let's start on your service leaflets. And the kids will be, uh, we have nursery today, but the kids will be with us participating the whole time today. So this will be a whole family service. All right, let's start with the liturgy of the palms. Are you ready? Blessed, be, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. Mm. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us a sign of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in the glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth Hosanna. in peace. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Yeah. 
Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I see the King of Glory. I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see His love and mercy washing over all our sin. The people sing, the people sing, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the my heart. Fill my heart and make it clean. Open up my eyes to the things unseen. Show me how to love like you have loved me. breaks your everything I am for your kingdom's cause as I walk from earth into eternity Hosanna 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 in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord of all bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord of all whom David, Lord, did call the God incarnate man divine and crown him Lord of all the God incarnate man divine crown him Lord of all oh, with that yonder sacred throng Yonder sacred throng, we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown Let us pray.
Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the book of Zechariah. Ashkelon shall see it and be afraid. Gaza too and shall writhe in anguish. Ekron also because its hopes are confounded. The king shall perish from Gaza. Ashkelon shall be uninhabited. A mixed people shall dwell in Ashdod and I will cut off the pride of Philistia. I will take away its blood from its mouth and its abominations from between its teeth. It too shall be a remnant for our God. It shall be like a clan in Judah, and Ekron shall be like the Jebusites. Then I will encamp at my house as a guard, so that none shall march to and fro. No oppressor shall again march over them, for now I see with my own eyes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double for I have bent Judah as my bow. I have made Ephraim as its arrow. I will stir up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and wield you like a warrior's sword. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb. Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lamb. Righteous, 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 righteous. 
Passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Congregation can be seated for the first part of the Passion reading. And they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And while he was speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of his, the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him, and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. 
And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you were one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and, and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priest accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner from, from whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison, who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him up. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Please stand. And they brought him to the place called, called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw this, that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. And there were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when the evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died, 
And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in the tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb. Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lamb. Righteous, 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 righteous is the Lamb. Faithful, 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 faithful is the Lamb. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb. Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Please be seated. All right, so I'm going to ask the PowerPoint team to put a picture up on the screens. And I'm going to ask a question to the youngest children that we have in the room. The youngest children, what animal is this? Who's the youngest person who can answer me? Is it a horse? Yeah, thank you. All right, so now I have a question for the slightly older children. I want you children to imagine a world where there are no machines there are no engines, there's nothing that runs on electricity. In that kind of world, what good is a horse? Mm. Davion. Pull cart yeah, farmers use it to pull a cart around, or uh, you can transport things. Yeah, they're, they're strong, aren't they? Uh, what else? Adela? Like getting, around. getting around, yeah, transportation. You can ride a horse. Adela, why is it better to get on a horse than just use your feet? faster, yeah, and you can go a lot further in a day. So yeah, you can ride by horse. Horses are very useful. What else are they good for? Mm, any other ideas? Yeah. Jamel? Pulling your um, hose and everything. Yeah, your plows on a farm. Yeah, they're very strong, so they're good for pulling a plow. Uh, you can use a horse for that. What else are they good for? Mm. Yeah. Yes, battle. They're great for battle. Why are horses great in battle? Yeah, Della. They're fast. Yeah, you can uh, carry a weapon or a lance and you can move really fast. Why else are they good in battle? Yeah, that. Yes, yes, and they make the, the warrior higher. So if you're riding a horse, your sword's at head height. You can lock people's heads off. And your, your head's far above the, uh, the weapons, right? So they make you high, yeah. Um, and, also, uh, horses are extremely brave, right? One of the characteristics that they have is they're brave in battle. They don't get worried by noises or uh, blood or uh, fear. They're, they're very fierce. And another thing about horses is they, they can be trained, right? There aren't, uh, we can't ride a lot of animals because uh, they can't be trained. They're wild. But horses, they start off wild, but they can be broken in. There's a, there's a magical moment that happens in the training of a horse while you're breaking it in where it submits. It's, it's dude, and it uh, submits to the uh, trainer. All right, so horses, pretty great, right? Um, and uh, it, well, without machines, horses were probably the most valuable thing on earth for getting work done, for doing battle, um, and they're very strong. And uh, so if you, if you go online and you Google uh, king on his horse, you can find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures of that, paintings. Here's one. Um, this is King Charles I astride his great horse. And um, I remember when I was uh, a child in school, we took a, a school trip to um, the, National Port, the National Gallery in London, Trafalgar Square. And uh, this was probably, I think, the first painting that we, we saw on the tour. We sat down in this painting. The real thing is, I don't know, 20 feet square. It's like as big as a wall, massive painting. Um, and we sat here, and um, the, uh, the guide at the museum was telling us about this painting. Now, 
uh, we, we were asked, what do we notice? What do we notice about this painting? As you look at, this is the king, and he's sitting on his horse. It's a bit small. It's a lot smaller for you guys. Uh, but what do you notice? Any, any children notice something special about this painting? Yeah, Dad. Yes, he's wearing armor. Do you see he's wearing shiny armor with his sword at his side? So this is the king who uh, wants to, to be known as a king who's mighty in battle. Yeah, what else do you see? Bethany. He's riding a horse. Yes, he is riding a horse. Now, is there anything a bit strange about that horse? Do you think? Yes. Yeah, what do you think, Rowan? Yeah, it's really big, isn't it? That there's no, we've never seen a horse that looks like that. Look at the thickness of that neck and the chest. Like, this is like the Dwayne Johnson of horses. Um, and, and it seems that the, this, a horse like this never really existed, and the, and the painters exaggerated the rippling muscles down the back legs and that huge chest. So um, horses were a symbol then of power of power and great uh, strength and authority. Okay, here's another picture, and we'll come back to our youngest children for what is this? It's a donkey! It's a donkey. Yeah, so this is a donkey, and um, he's, uh, he's a lot smaller than a horse, and this is actually kind of a, a kid donkey called a colt, a baby donkey less than three years old. And this is the very kind of donkey, uh, at being a colt, that uh, Jesus would have ridden. We don't know what breed, breed it was. Um, so, uh, children then, does, does a donkey look kind of like a horse, do you think? Yeah, but what's, uh, what's different between the horse and the donkey? Uh, Davion? The donkey's stubborn. Stubborn, yeah, right. So the horse can be trained, the donkey's kind of stubborn. That's a good point. What else? Yeah. Smaller. Much smaller, yeah, especially a colt, yeah. So um, if he, it, the, the scripture says he'd never been ridden on, which probably meant he was pretty clumsy, right? Awkward, not used to having a rider. Jesus was probably stumbling his way down that Mount of Olives. Uh, yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, their legs are shorter. They're, they're not glorious and muscular. What else, David? Yeah, they're not strong, they're not as strong as horses, they're not as brave as horses. So kind of like a donkey's just not really as good as a horse in any kind of way, right? <laughs> not in any kind of way, it's just a dumb old donkey. They're not fast, they're not strong, they're not tall, they're not brave. Um, all right, so um, I want us to uh, see again the difference. So here we are, we've got a horse, majestic, glorious, fast, brave, mighty, the transport of the king. And then here's our donkey, small and slow, used by farmers and poor people, right? Um, now, donkeys are better than nothing. You, you take a donkey over nothing at all. Sometimes a donkey's just what you need. Here's the next picture of how we still use donkeys today. Here are people coming out of the Grand Canyon. Anybody ever ridden a donkey into the Grand Canyon? Yeah, some of you have. Okay, great. So this is one of the uses we still have for donkeys, but we don't use them in battle. No use at all. Okay, so let's go back to our donkey. And um, here is the animal that King Jesus chose to ride. Isn't that kind of striking? Uh, Jesus specifically told his disciples, he, he told them to go ahead into the town and get this animal, right? So it was kind of a miraculous setup. He went over and he just asked the, well, he didn't even ask the owners. They just untied the colt and took him away. And the owners said, what are you doing? And uh, they said, the Lord has need of it. So because of the way that Jesus got this donkey, we kind of reason he could have had anything, right? He could have had anything he wanted. If he wanted a horse, he could have had a horse. If he wanted an elephant, he probably could have had an elephant. I think he probably could have ridden in on a dragon if he'd wanted. Uh, but no, Jesus chose a donkey, right? And he chose this donkey for, for a reason. And we find a, the part of this reason when we uh, read in the, the prophecy of Zechariah, which we heard. Okay? So listen again to what Zechariah said. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on a foal of a donkey. So Zechariah and his prophecy was very specific. Not even just any old donkey, but a donkey colt, and that's just as it truly happened. 
And Zechariah in his prophecy said that this would be a symbol of the coming of the true king, the Messiah. And he also said that when people saw this symbol, they would break into song, they would cry aloud, they would shout for joy. And that's exactly as it happened on the first Palm Sunday. If you, uh, if you get on your Google image search and you say, king riding a donkey, you get nothing. <laughs> nothing. There's hundreds on a horse. No, one, the only person on a donkey you'll find is Jesus. And then there's a dumb movie called King Donkey, which gets most of the image hits. But you don't find any kings riding donkeys, right? So, um, so this is very, very unusual. Um, and so the people shouting Hosanna, they were, in, they were realizing this was the, the prophecy of Zechariah. It was very specific. This was their humble king coming to them. And they expected then that the rest of the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9 was going to be fulfilled in their time. And when you read the rest of the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 9, it talks about the end of war. It talks about victory. It talks about conquest. Did you notice that as we read it? Um, it says, no oppressor shall again march over them. No oppressor. Like maybe Rome? And then in the verse right after the donkey passage in Zechariah 9, it says, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow I shall break um, and, uh, and, and I shall speak peace to the nations and his rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Does that sound like a pretty amazing prophecy? Does that sound like the end of time when war is ended? <coughs> And peace is established on the earth. So I think we can forgive the people in the, in the Palm Sunday parade for thinking that this was it. This was the day. This sounds like a king who's going to defeat all of Israel's enemies and bring lasting peace. And I think this is what was really exciting the people on the first Palm Sunday. They wanted a king who would fight. They wanted a king who was going to defeat all their enemies. They wanted a king who was going to rule and establish the world with peace. Is that what they got? Did they get a king who would fight a battle and establish peace? Not in the way they wanted. Exactly. Thank you, Karen. Not in the way they were expecting. So they did have a king who was going to fight a battle. Jesus was going to go to the cross. He was going to fight a brave and mighty battle. And he was going to defeat Satan. And he was going to end sin. And he's going to conquer death. And that's kind of the greatest battle that's ever been fought. That was a fight that was going to take him to the cross instead of the battlefield. And he was going to, therefore, establish peace. Establish peace between people and God. So the prophecy was true, but it wasn't fulfilled yet in the way that they were expecting. Um, so here's what I, I want us to know today so that we're, we don't get surprised and get Jesus wrong. What we need to know is that it's donkey now, horse later. Donkey now, horse later. So um, uh, I'm, I'm going to put another picture up on the screen. This is from a children's book called The Story of God, Our King. Look at this wonderful picture that they've drawn here of uh, Jesus on his horse. All right, so uh, Jesus has ridden the donkey, but he does have a horse after all. Uh, this is what it says in Revelation chapter 19. Look at this picture while I read this. Then I, uh, John saw this revelation and he said, Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So what the people of the first Palm Sunday were expecting was going to happen in their time, it wasn't wrong. It is going to happen. It's just going to happen later. Donkey now, horse later. Zechariah wasn't wrong about the things in the rest of his prophecy. He was just seeing ahead to things that still haven't happened yet. Uh, and this part that's in this book is a good part of the story 
Uh, Jesus gets on his horse, and that's going to be glad news for the whole world. Lots of good things are going to come when Jesus does get on his white horse. But for now, we're still in the time of the donkey. So let's have this donkey up on screen one more time. And I want to challenge us that maybe this time of the donkey is even more glad and joyful than the time of the horse. Uh, that's, a, that's a challenge for me. I find the idea of the horse fighting fast and strong and decisive. Uh, the donkeys may be a little bit slow and boring. But no, Jesus on a donkey is exciting. The donkey means that he's gentle, that he's coming to save people, not to judge them. He's coming to bring people life and not to destroy them. It's good that we have another day today, a day of the donkey instead of the horse. The first people cried out in worship, and they shouted Hosanna when they saw the donkey. Uh, and it's just like the praises spontaneously just burst out of them all at once. Luke wrote that on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. And they were right. That was right. And so I want to encourage us, especially today, to let the praises of our king flow out of us, to let them pour out of us. What mighty works have you seen? Has your Lord done anything for you lately? Has he answered any of the cries of your heart? Has God made a way where there seemed to be no way? Has he shone a light of hope when there was no hope? Has he given you what you could not or should not have? The horse is coming, the horse is coming later, and that's important for our hope, but the donkey is already here, and that's important for our joy. So rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Your king has come to you. Amen. Please stand or kneel for the prayers of the people. <clears throat> we begin by making space for any words of prayer, repentance, or praise in response to the word that has just been preached. The, the phrase that just keeps coming to me as John was um, speaking was, has the Lord done anything for you lately? when you don't feel like a king for us, when we don't see you for who you are, 
nonetheless. I mean, praise you, Lord, that even when our expectations are off, you're still in the king. We gather all these prayers together, and um, let's continue to pray together on page six. For the peace of the whole world, for the church, and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joe, our president, and Ron, our governor. Lord, in your mercy. For Alex, our bishop, for John, Peter, and Jeff, our priests, for deacons Irma and David, and for all the clergy of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, for those who are persecuted for their faith, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy, for all those have, who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake. Our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please kneel or continue standing as you're able. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Peace be with all of you this morning. Or as you can also say, shalom. Shalom. Well, good morning, Incarnation. If this is your first time visiting with us, we'd love to welcome you and get to know you. So please do stick around, fill out one of the connect cards on the side of your pews and drop it off in the offering basket as it comes around. Um, we love to get you connected to the life of this community because we meet more than just here on Sunday mornings. Um, so if you wanna know what's happening throughout the week, um, please just get in touch with us through email or phone number. Just show up, give us what you prefer and we will reach out to you. Um, and for today, coffee hour will be in the courtyard. Um, so you can go out through these double doors to your left and the bathrooms will, always, will also be in, um, in the back as well. So we're going to have a special contra dance um, on April 7th at 4 p.m. in the fellowship hall, which is the building right behind us. Yes, you should go, we should all go. Yes, so if you're interested, um, you have any questions, talk to Claire Wright. If she's here, wave her hand. Yes, Claire's back there, woo! Yes, <laughs> so don't be afraid if you've never done it. There will be an instructor that I heard, so never fear, just come. Uh, it will be a great time. And another special announcement is the Phi Center will be having their annual banquet fundraiser on the evening of April 11th. I believe it's at 6 p.m. Um, so if you're interested, also talk to Ceci. Where is she? Yeah, she's there. <laughs> um, so yes, please do come support our Phi Center. And for Holy Week, we're getting into Holy Week. Um, it's already here. So did, does anyone have the Holy Week flyer? Wave it in the air if you have it. Oh, you don't have it. Okay, so it's gonna be in the front foyer. Grab a couple of flyers and give them out to your neighbors and your coworkers this week. We would love to have you. So we on Thursday, we will have Maundy Thursday at the Kramers where we'll be doing foot washing and dinner. So please do RSVP and the link will be in the email uh, coming out to you this week. And we also have our Good Friday services on Friday, you guessed it. Uh, it will be at noon and 7 p.m. with Stations of the Cross. Thank you, someone laughed at my joke. That's, that's what I strive for. So as you see all the Stations of the Cross with um, artwork from our local artists, um, there will be a time for you to walk around and meditate as well as a time for confession. And of course, Easter Sunday happens on Sunday. You don't have to laugh at that. Um, 
which we should have a slide for that as well. Yes, we will have two services. How many services? Two. Yes, so come at 9 and 11.15. Don't come at 10. It'll be really awkward for you. Um, and there will be a reception at 10.30 with lots of goodies. So we would love to share that with you. Um, now I want to invite Pastor John up for some special announcements. Uh, I love this part. I get to publish glad tidings. Can you show the next picture, Jordan? V. Uh, Colleen Sopa yeah. was born this week. Uh, Thursday night, uh, mother and baby are well. Ivy. So they have uh, Hazel, Holly, and Ivy. There's a theme, easy to remember. Um, this week that we're about to start, that we are starting with this Sunday, is um, the holiest week in the church's calendar. It is called Holy Week. Um, and it ends with Easter Day next week. And I just want to really encourage all of you to uh, put a pin in this week and mark it uh, in some special ways. Uh, to treat this week as much as you can as like uh, bringing your very best to the Lord and participating to the utmost. So if you've had Lent, um, if you've had Lent disciplines and they've kind of got a bit sloppy and fallen by the wayside, start again today and keep them solidly for Holy Week. And I want to really encourage you to come and participate on Thursday and on Friday and on Sunday um, and to just really be present, kind of, you know, dwell at the church this week or uh, dwell in a place of prayer this week. Um, because this is a, a precious gift of our inheritance that we've received uh, through the ages uh, by the church, by the Lord, uh, to really meet with him as we take this journey of his final week um, in, uh, on earth. So I just want to really encourage you to not miss out, not miss it, not get distracted by uh, other things, but to really focus on the Lord this Holy Week. Uh, we're going to come to our time of Holy Communion. If you're a baptized follower of the Lord Jesus, you're welcome to receive the bread and the wine in this church, regardless of your home denomination. Uh, the ushers will guide you forward, and you can watch the person in front of you for what to do. Uh, now we come in preparation to our time of offering, and I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, who by his suffering and death became the author of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. standing. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary he became flesh and dwelt among us in obedience to your will he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all. His suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of, our Son, of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this Holy Spirit, be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. 
All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ our, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. praying together. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, higher. Just the voices I exalt thee. Exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. please stand. And I'd like to invite any of you all who would like to express praise and thanksgiving for the next few moments. We've got a good run on it with that song. So please, if there's anyone who would like to just utter praise or thanksgiving, feel free. Thank you, Lord, that even when we cry out, crucify him, crucify you, Lord, that you love us yes. and that you welcome us back in your mercy and you, you embrace us in your grace. You. Thank you, Jesus. Almighty God, you are high and lifted up, majestic in your holiness, and we give thanks for all that you have done for us. And now praying together, eternal God, heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that has been kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Wondrous 
love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, what a wondrous love is this, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing to God and to the Lamb, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am, while millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing, while millions join the theme. I will sing and win from death and win from death I'm free I'll sing on I'll sing on and win from death I'm free I'll sing on and win from death I'm free I'll sing in joyful peace and through eternity I'll sing on, I'll sing on, and through eternity I'll sing on. What wondrous love is this that caused? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul to lay aside his crown for my soul. For those of you who have been enjoying the catechism class in the conference room, you'll be glad to hear that it's happening again today. So please do show up at 11.45 um, and I'll hand over to the deacon. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Uh,